This is Mac OS Ken. iPhone goes gangbusters in China. News from Electric Beta Land and scary stuff for Apple TV Plus. It's Thursday, the 4th of March, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Audible Plus. Content that entertains, inspires, and informs. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. The age of the tough compares is upon us. Apple Insider has had a look at a note to clients from Morgan Stanley analyst Katie Huberty. According to that, iPhone shipments in China grew 150% in January of 2021 versus the same month a year earlier. And boy, is that growth going to be hard to beat. Of course, in January of 2020, people in China weren't buying a lot of iPhones. What with their literally being locked down to stop the spread of coronavirus? That said, credit should also go to iPhone 12, which is faring well with consumers. According to the report, Apple is second for smartphone install base and continues to hold on to that position, despite Huawei's continued increase in users over 2020. Apple accounts for 20.3% of the Chinese install base and Huawei accounts for 32%. Apple has seen five consecutive months of China install base gains up to January 2021. Five months of growth up to January is impressive, considering iPhone 12 would have only been out for about three and a half of those. Sales were really juiced by two of the iPhone 12s, though. The report has Huberty figuring that iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro Max are two of the five most popular iPhone models in China over the last four years. Huberty has an overweight rating on Apple shares. Her price target on the shares is $164. HB 2005 is moving ahead in Arizona. On Wednesday, Mac Rumors said that the Arizona House of Representatives passed HB 2005, a state bill that would provide developers with an alternative to Google and Apple's in-app purchase options by allowing developers to use their own payment solutions within apps. The bill moves now to the Arizona Senate. The case of searching the cases is starting to look a little messed up. This is a story that's been going for most of a decade. Back in 2013, a group of Apple retail employees in California sued the Cupertino company for time spent waiting around. Folks who brought purses, bags, or satchels to work had to clock out, then have their bags checked by security before being allowed to leave. A few people, a few bag checks, and suddenly you're spending a lot of compulsory time at work, not getting paid. The case was dismissed in 2014, though a class action suit was allowed to go forward. That case was dismissed in 2015, though, like something from a movie, it found new life last year. In his 2015 dismissal, the judge in the case, U.S. District Judge William Alsup, said employees could have skipped the line by simply not bringing anything with them to work. In reversing his decision, a piece from Apple Insider says the California Supreme Court determined that employees were and are in Apple's control during mandatory exit searches of bags, packages, devices, and other items, State law requires companies to compensate employees for time spent on anti-theft programs. A later decision from the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit revived the class action as it stands. And believe it or not, here is where things get messed up. While Judge Alsop is prepared to side with the 12,000-plus employees in the class action, he will let Apple argue individual claims on a case-by-case -case basis. Apple had apparently wanted each employee to fill out detailed forms regarding time spent and security checks and when those checks were carried out, according to Apple Insider. 
The judge shot that down, saying, I'm not going to require the claimants to figure out every day they stood in line and how long they stood in line. If they gave dates, they would not be telling the truth. Apple is just out of luck on that point. Instead, Judge Alsop says he plans to hold a series of mini-trials on damages during which Apple lawyers can argue against individual member claims. You know, mini-trials should have tiny gavels and revealing robes. Court documents show Apple could be responsible for some $60 million in damages, according to the piece. Just a day after making it out to developers, a piece from Apple Insider says the third betas of macOS 11.3, iPadOS 14.5, and iOS 14.5 are out to public testers. Remember, kids, you don't want these things on your primary machines. While it is fun to be bleeding edge, betas can be buggy and could mess up your kit. That said, if you have spare machines on which to test, or if you just want to throw caution to the wind, you can learn more about the public beta program at beta.apple.com. Following a bit behind the others is the latest beta for tvOS. Mac Rumor says the third beta for tvOS 14.5 is out to developers, Highlighting the only new feature about which it knows, Mac Rumor says tvOS 14.5 brings support for the latest PlayStation 5 DualSense and Xbox Series X controllers, which can be used to play games for the tvOS App Store and Apple Arcade. Actually, there is one more new feature. The piece points out that apps for Apple TV will have to follow the same app tracking transparency rules that are on the way for the iPhone and iPad. Apple Watch functionality in Australia is closer to a boost. Cult of Mac says the country's government has given approval for the chronometer's ECG feature. That follows government approval for Apple Watch's irregular heart rhythm notifications by about a month. While the government's given the green light, one assumes an Apple Watch update will be required to actually turn it on. It's unclear when Apple will do that according to the cult. More news in a moment, but first a word from Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audio books. Have you checked out Audible Plus yet? Audible Plus gives you access to thousands and thousands of select Audible originals, audio books, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of popular shows, as well as exclusive series. You put the app on your phone or tablet, then browse by genre, by mood, by most popular listens, or search for a topic you're into. I've told you about the titles I like this week, like Summer by Edith Wharton, Bluebird Memories, part of the Audible original series Words Plus Music featuring Common, and Bram Stoker's Dracula, which I am thoroughly enjoying. I'm curious what titles you'll find. Listen while you work, listen while you work out, and maybe the best part, you can start listening for free. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Whether you're looking to strengthen skills, be more informed, or just be entertained, Audible Plus has tons of titles for you. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500-500 to start your free 30-day trial. Text macOSCan to 500-500 or visit audible.com slash macOSCan. News of something creepy coming for Apple TV+, Plus, full of actors you apparently will not see. Cult of Mac writes up what we know about Calls. Based on a French series of the same name, the show was co-produced by Apple TV+, Plus and the French network Canal Plus. Here's some of what Apple says about the new series on its YouTube page. Calls is a groundbreaking, immersive television experience that masterfully uses only audio and minimal abstract visuals to tell bone-chilling, snackable stories. 
All nine 12-minute episodes are told through a series of phone calls that use sharp writing, compelling voice talent, and graphics to aid in transcribing the darkly dramatic conversations onto the screen. The show is launching in a binge model, according to Apple, a.k.a. All at Once. Featured voices include Lily Collins, Rosario Dawson, Mark Duplass, Nick Jonas, Pedro Pascal, and more. It's unclear whether the nine calls are related or standalone. We'll find out pretty soon, though. The full collection hits Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 19th of March. Doubling down on the scares, News Wednesday of a new series order from Apple TV+. Plus. The streamer issued a press release yesterday saying it has added to its international slate by ordering Dr. Brain. According to the release, Dr. Brain is a new sci-fi thriller based on the widely popular Korean webtoon that will be written and directed by visionary filmmaker Kim Ji-woon and star SAG Award winner Lee sung Kyun. The series marks the first Korean-language project for Apple TV+. Describing the show, Apple says Dr. Brain is an emotional journey that follows a brain scientist who is obsessive about figuring out new technologies to access the consciousness and memories of the brain. His life goes sideways when his family falls victim to a mysterious accident, and he uses his skills to access memories from his wife's brain to piece together the mystery of what actually happened to his family and why? Well, based on a webtoon, it is unclear whether the series will be animated or live action. It's in production in South Korea now. Dr. Brain hits Apple TV Plus later this year. And finally today, a slew of award nominations for some of Apple's animated fare. Well, a slew of nominations for Wolf Walkers, though another animated title did get a nomination. Mac Daily News says the feature Wolf Walkers and the animated series Stillwater garnered multiple Annie Award nominations. Those are awards dedicated to the field of animation. Technically, they got multiple. In reality, Stillwater was nominated for one award, while Wolf Walkers was nominated for several. Stillwater is up for Best TV or Media preschool for the episode The Impossible Dream, Stuck in the Rain. Meanwhile, in the feature category, Wolf Walkers is up for Best FX, Best Character Animation, Best Character Design, Best Direction, Best Music, Best Production Design, Best Storyboarding, Best Voice Acting, Best Writing, and Best Indie Feature. Coming up, in a few minutes, Parallel host Shelley Brisbane and I have lots of thoughts around Apple Car. Uh, nothing concrete, though. Hear us roll through them in a few minutes. Look for that show and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can Live goes live again today, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kenray. Be there when it happens or grab the audio podcast later. Look for Mac OS Ken Live and subscribe wherever podcasts are found. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac OS Ken or text Mac OS Ken to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray.
Chao.